winter in the greenhouse and that means it's time to repot the Mexican and tropical pigwicula collection back here. So all of these plants I have to repot. It's a lot of plants. Now, why do we have these plants? What are they for? That's a really good question. These are our botanical collection. It's like a genetic arc. These, this is a bunch of site location, pure species, rare plants, cool hybrids, just plants that are really important and we wanna keep those genetics, genetics safe. We are also honestly just obsessed with them because we're plant nerds and we love them and we wanna look at them all the time. And then the last thing is that they're an important piece of our propagation. So when Damien is making all those cool new hybrids for you, like Mad Madam Mim or Neon Raspberry or Tiffany's Neon Jamboree, those plants are coming out of this collection. He's hybridizing between the flowers here. We can also do leaf pulling. So just like a succulent, you can actually pull a leaf off of a ping and get a strike and make it a genetically identical plant. So we propagate a lot of plants from these. So they're really important for, to us. And so because of that, we wanna take the best care possible of them. And that means repotting every single year if possible. Sometimes things get a little hectic and it doesn't happen, but we try. So in your own collection, I would suggest you try to do this. Just try to make this part of your January, just new year, new pots, and they're gonna be so happy. So why do we repot them so frequently? That's a good question because it does seem pretty aggressive to do it once a year. So pinguicula, just like Venus flytraps, are very sensitive to the buildup of minerals and salts in their soil media. So while their soil is made up of just like sand and perlite and you know a little bit of peat moss, even that can be breaking down in the pot. And as that breaks down, it's adding salts and minerals. And even though you're using distilled reverse osmosis or rainwater to water, that still can have sometimes like 10 parts per million. And that's slowly building up in this as well. So it's a really good idea to change out the soil material so that you have fresh, clean stuff every single year. And it just is gonna make your plant a lot happier. We do see pinks die from not being repotted frequently enough. And they do a very strange sort of shrinking thing. And then they die. It's a very specific look. I can always tell when someone sends me a picture that's a plant that needs to be repotted. And it's just because there's too much of a mineral and salt load in that soil. It's also a good idea to clean out your trays that your plants sit in a few times a year, just to scrub them out and clean them up and make sure that there's no like minerals and salts building up on the trays. That's just a pro tip. The other reason it's a good idea to change them out is that you will sometimes find the weirdest little pests in here. I just pulled a caterpillar out of one. Sometimes you find earthworms in the pots, you know, so, Sometimes there's a problem that you don't, you know something's wrong, but you can't figure it out. And sometimes that's what it is. There's a weird little pest you've just removed. You're also going to want to do this to slow the momentum and roll of fungus and rot. So when we pull all these apart, we're gonna pull all the dead leaves off. So we're gonna be able to pull away a lot of the stuff that is going to contribute to fungus and rot and things like diseases that can outbreak, outbreak in the pings. So there's all these really good reasons to repot them. Now, the other thing that you wanna do when you repot is you really do wanna take those leaf pullings I talked about because that's insurance. Pings do not live forever and it's really heartbreaking when one of your favorite pings dies. So I recommend when you first get a ping to look nice and big and beautiful or when you're doing your repotting, take a few leaf pulls, make yourselves some insurance plants. Those are plants that are gonna be there for you when the mother plant passes away and you have new plants with new momentum. And we do that every year with all of our plants. And that means we have confirmed that we're gonna have the same genetically identical plant going forward and we don't have to worry. And like, you know, the worst thing that happens if you do this at home is that you have too many pinks and that is not a problem. So let's go ahead and repot some pinks and I'm gonna go through dividing pinks, which can be a little tricky, repotting, how to repot. And we will briefly touch on leaf pullings, uh, but we're gonna do a much more in-depth video about that in another month when Damon does those in February because he loves to just do those and he just flies through them and he has so many good techniques. So we will do another video all about leaf pullings, but I will touch on it in this video later. All right, let's go pot. This is a pot of pilosa by Emarginata. It has really just the sweetest little flowers. I really do think these are cute. You can tell they've been in this pot for a little while because they're very clumped up. They're just tight, tight, tight. They've made a lot of new plants. And then there's a lot of stuff hanging off the sides. So this is actually an old flower stalk and I really highly recommend Somehow these have the strength of like a thousand men. And when you pull on these, like sometimes they come off and other times they just literally rip the entire plant out of the ground. So I recommend going through and trimming those off with scissors rather than trying to pull them off or give them a very gentle tug. And if they don't want to come off, definitely don't pull hard. That's going to be kind of the theme with all of these ping, the ping work we're going to do today. It's gentle but firm and never force. So if something doesn't want to happen, don't force it with pings because what pings want to do when you force them is explode into a million leaves and it sucks. So 
the first thing I'm going to do is I really kind of want to see if I can just break this whole thing of pings off the soil, which I usually can, just like this. So that's the old pot. And here is, here's my mat, right? And so if I was to flip this over, you could just see it's just like mat with a little bit of root coming through, like that's some ping root. These are old flower stalks still, and then there's just a crust of dirt. Here's a little bit of moss, and under there it's all knit together with moss and dead leaves. So I'm just going to be first, in this case, because it's kind of a big chunk, I am going to just try to pull off a few of the bigger plants just to make this easier to work with, and then I'll put them to the side. So I just gently work, held this and wiggled and pulled. And that's kind of always what I'm doing with things is I'm very gently pulling and wiggling, very gentle. We'll just set all of those to the side. And sometimes it's super easy. Just They just want to give where they want to give. Easy peasy. We're going to start to find this getting harder and harder. Oh, guess not. Look, that one's pretty easy. And I'm trying not to destroy all the flowers in the process. Okay, so now we have this chunk. This is quite a chunk. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just tease the soil that I can off of the roots with my finger. I'm trying not to force anything. I don't wanna break any roots. So I'm just using my bottom fingernails to do this. And that kind of helps tease off a lot of the soil. I'm trying to avoid getting soil onto the leaves as well because that can really be gross looking and it can damage these sensitive looking leaves. Then I'm just gonna start gently pulling things. Like this is just a bit of moss. And let's go ahead and cut off all of these flowers, old flower stalks. We don't need those. I am going to try and leave all the flowers on, though, that I have on it right now, because after repotting, we find that pings don't really lose their leaves. I'm just going to apologize now. The fan's going to kick on and off, and I can't stop it. I mean, I could, but then it would get boiling hot in here, and everybody would be miserable. So I have to, I have to let the fans go. I'm sorry. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look under here. And really, this is like a carpet of old moss, some old soil bits, roots, and dead leaves. So I find that it's easiest to get a pair of forceps and use those to gently pull things off. I really just want to try and pull like one leaf off at a time. I don't usually grab too many at a time because that's another way to easily pull accidentally half of your ping apart. And I will just use this like a little fork to get in here and pull off all the old moss. And look at, look at this like chunk. The thing is the roots are in this. So what I don't want to do is just rip this off and rip all the roots off. That would suck. So I want to just be very slow and gentle and methodical and just pull things off. So I'm just going to work on this for a minute and then we'll get to dividing this clump when I'm done. All right, so I've got this clump and you can see there's one, two, three, four, four little plants on here. So let's see if we can separate this. The trick with dividing pings up when they're clumpy is you need to not push them too hard because sometimes they share enough um, like material down here that if you try to separate their flesh, they just aren't separate enough to separate. And what's going to happen is as you pull, one will explode and one will get to keep the main, the main amount of, uh, of tissue. So you really don't want to separate your pings or force them unless they really want to come apart. So I often will kind of look in here and try to see what I can see. If I can see like two separate units, all right, so I, like, I think we can separate these. The other hard part is you don't want to squish this ping while you're trying to get these guys apart. And it's very easy to accidentally like pinch too hard on one of these other pings and just again lose a bunch of leaves. So the real trick is finding a grip that you think is going to be safe and not hurt anything else. So you're gonna to wanna to wiggle your fingers in. Oh, let's see. To a place where you feel like you have some grip. And then you're gonna to have to shimmy them apart with gentle force and a wiggle. And you never want to pull too hard. And you also never ever want to move quickly. You wanna do a slow pressure with a little bit of a wiggle. Just looking at this still as I do this. And sometimes you can start to see it separate and you'll notice the leaves are kind of stuck so you can stop and pull them apart. I'm very likely to lose a leaf here. You can see this is a plant that has got very loose leaves. So I gotta be really careful how I move and we're going to do slow 
pull and shimmy. So see, look, we did lose a leaf. That does happen when you're doing this, but this is a totally intact leaf and therefore we can use it for our ping leaf pulling. But try to be as slow and careful as you can so as to damage as few leaves as possible. So again, just pinching, slowly pulling and wiggling, and I'm not feeling enough movement on that one, so I don't like it. I'm gonna move on to this one. Sometimes it's like a puzzle. You have to kind of unlock them in pieces. See how easily that came off? Now these two are not conjoined. You can totally see their flesh is just not conjoined at the base. So I know I can separate them. They're just really matted together. And the other big risk here is I don't wanna to pull too hard and cause one of these plants to get all the roots and the other one to get none. So sometimes it's a good idea to take a quick look, see what's going on in here. Let's take a look. So, let's see what we can do. Got it. Slow pull, got those apart. So the rest of these are gonna be really easy, I think, because those, these, again, I'm just gonna slip my fingers in I can feel the space, slow wiggle and pull apart. Slow wiggle and pull right apart, super easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up every single one of these pings and that means, oh look, we found, this is a baby ping in here. Got tucked under the leaves. So I'm just gonna spend a little time, I'm gonna pull all the moss off, all the dead leaves and just try to clean up these roots and then I will check back with you when I'm done. I thought we could do the last couple of pings together and I'll highlight a few of the important things to know. So, first of all, here's this guy. This is actually two, as you can see. But first of all, I'm just gonna take all of this, pull this chunk of dirt off. Oh my God, of course the fan again. Okay, so I'm pulling this dirt away. Now, when I flip it over, I'm gonna pull off these leaves this is a root, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Leaf, this is an old flower stalk. You can tell the difference between a flower stalk and a root, not just by the length, but because old dead flower stalks kind of feel like string. They're very hard, very firm, very dry. I'm gonna pull off this yellow leaf and these yellow leaves here. This was definitely one of the plants from like the clump in the middle. And here's what I wanted to talk about with this one. As you can see, there's two pings here. If I was to try to separate these pings, they share too much conjoined tissue, they would just explode. Or I could get one out and this one would explode. Not worth it. Leave these two together. I cannot see a very easy, clear path to actually getting these apart. So this is better to stay together and you can probably separate it next year when it develops a little more fully. Then on this ping, like this is a nicely finished ping, but I wanted to talk about leaves like this. This leaf is translucent and yellow. I'm going to pull it off. This ping has a couple of those, so I'm gonna pull a couple of those off. They're gonna rot almost immediately and I don't need to let that happen right there. And then I thought we should take a look at some root systems. So the root systems of pings can be really either non-existent or pretty full. This is somewhere in the middle. And you'll notice that there are some lovely white healthy roots, but you'll also notice there are brown roots in here. So be careful when you're cleaning your pings. Don't be so quick to just pull off anything brown, assuming that it's old soil or moss, because some of that might be old ping roots or it might be other things in there. And it's very easy to snap a ping root when you're trying to go after these brown things. So just a word of caution to be slow and steady. And remember that you can always dip these in water if you wanna really clean the roots off a ton to try or to try to tease out more of the soil. Okay. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to touch on is people often, when potting or doing any of this transplanting work, often accidentally get dirt on their ping. This is a ping, so I've dropped this in the soil and you can see it's got little chunks on it. And people's first instinct is they either want to try to delicately shift things off the root or try to pick them up. And I would suggest against that. It's so easy to bruise the leaves. So first off, just tip it over, see what you can get off. And then the next thing that we always do is we just mist it. We just use a misting bottle and very lightly mist the plant. And if you tilt it and turn it, you can usually mist all of that dirt right off the plant. And it's really gentle and you're less likely to bruise the plant. So that's our tip for the dirt. All right, so let's get started on the next step. Okay, so I've got my pot here. This has got our standard uh, Pinguicula soil mix in here. 
Remember, our website always has our up-to-date recipes on it with soil, so you can make those yourself, or you can always order it from us. This is sand, perlite, pumice, and peat moss. We do like to add peat moss to it because we do want it to hold a little bit of moisture, but we largely want it to be a rocky, dry mix that will easily lose that moisture so that the pings don't get too wet. So for my pings, I want to make little holes in the soil and plop them in and tuck them in tight, right? A lot of people do like to use forceps, and if you do, this is really important. Say that my finger is the ping. When you grab your, for your ping, use your forceps to hold the plant like this. Like I can't, I'm not even squeezing it, right? Don't squeeze like this. If you do this to your ping, you will crush it and it will be very upset with you. These are such delicate plants. The forceps should be a tool for lifting and moving around, but if you're gonna squeeze, this is not the plant. Don't use these to squeeze things. We don't even like to squeeze baby fly traps with these. They're just too delicate and it's so easy to bruise a plant. So I use them, I like to make a hole with them. And then I load it on like a little forklift. Like look, I'm not squeezing it, it's literally just holding it in place. And then I'll put it in the soil. And then I lightly will squeeze a little bit just to push it to where I want it. And then I will push the ping against one end of the hole over here. And I will move the soil with the end of my forcep or with my finger all the way against the base of the ping here while keeping one hand very lightly on the top of the ping. Now don't mash that ping down really hard. That's another way to crush it. You just wanna very lightly hold it in place and then push it down on all sides and that is one done. We're gonna go around and do all the rest of these. Remember this is our conjoined twin that we're gonna leave conjoined because it's a much better choice for us. A few things to keep in mind. Be careful, like, you see I have long pointy nails. If I was to dig down, I would crush this pig. Be really thoughtful of your nails. Another thing to think about is, of course, if you're doing this in winter, you're going to be um, working with pings that could be in succulent stage, which means they're smaller and tighter. Think about that when you're potting them up. You don't want to put a ping, like a cyclosecta that's like this, in really tight, and then know that in spring it's gonna be like this. Think about how they're gonna look as they grow and get big and fill out. I actually like it when they overlap a little, and so does Damon, but that's a quick and easy way for them to develop some fungal problems or hide some sins, you know, under those leaves. So be thoughtful and careful about that. In this case, this, this particular cross is not one that I have to worry too much about. Sorry, I think I just jiggled the camera. Also be careful, you'll notice there's so many flowers on these plants coming in. So when I do have my fingers holding them down, I'm being really careful. It could snap a flower so easily. And I don't want to snap any of these flowers because the pings are likely to keep them even after potting. And that's really fun. I like to unfold the leaves as well as when I'm doing this. So that way they're not tucked under because when they're tucked under, they're likely to crease and get damaged and kind of die back faster than if they're unfurled perfectly. This is a little piece of old leaf here and I could obsess about it and try and get it off, but I'll probably just destroy the plant, so I'm gonna be good. I am gonna briefly talk to you about if you did wanna take a leaf pulling, these tighter, smaller leaves on the inside are much better for leaf pulling than these larger leaves. So what you would wanna do, if you wanna pull a leaf, grasp it firmly, but not tight. You don't wanna squeeze it. Again, this is not a squeezing plant. And then you hold the plant in one hand and then just pull, wiggle, and it comes right off. And what you really need is you need this whole tip to be intact to make a good pulling. Oh, we like we broke a flower, that's so sad. Put that to the side. I'll show you something you can do with those too. If you didn't know it, pink flowers last in, in water for a really long time. So we sometimes, you know, we lose pink flowers for various reasons here in the nursery and we always put them in a little cup of water and they last a really long time and they're so cheerful. So again, I'm just pushing the soil back against that hole so that it's nicely filled in. And I'm gonna leave a little space right here just to show you how I would do a leaf pulling. Um, and 
your home setting, you can definitely put leaf pullings directly into the pot that you're growing your plants in, but they like high humidity to really set that, that growth. So a better way would be to put them in a small cup, plastic cup that you can seal over the top. Fill this with a little pig mix or a long fiber New Zealand sphagnum moss, get it a little damp, and then you're just gonna place your leaf right into it. Put the lid on it, put it off to the side of the grow lights, uh, leave it, check it for moisture, and it will strike. But you could also put it here in the soil. And this is a perfect leaf because it's gonna, it's thick and juicy, and when it's drying out, it's actually not gonna curl too much, so it's gonna be really easy to place. You just need to place the tip of this leaf in the soil, like this but you don't want to bury it. You just want it to make light contact. So that would be really an easy way to do that. If you have a bigger leaf like this that fell off the plant and you want to try it, this is important. If my, my fingers are the soil, you really want the leaf to be like this on the soil so that the tip is touching the soil base, but you don't want it like this. You don't want it buried between the soil. You just want it like this. So you want it resting there. So I'll make a little hummock in the soil so that the leaf can be on it and the nose of the leaf can be touching the soil. And remember, a big leaf like this is gonna dry out and it's actually gonna curl more and pull away from the soil. So think about that as you're making your little, your little spot for it. In this case, I'm gonna do my leaf cuttings in a tray separately because I'm doing all of the pink collections. So I've got a lot of leaf cuttings. So I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna squeeze one more ping in here. You can pot your pings in any order you like. Damon and I never really like symmetrical plantings because that's not how it looks in nature. So we kind of like it to be a little chaotic. But there we go. We have our beautiful Pelosa by Emarginata, which is such a cute little hybrid. Sweet little flowers. And then one last thing was that I was going to show you. Any flowers that fall off, just set them in water. Find a cute little bud vase, put them in water, and this will stay open for so long you're going to be so thrilled. It's a lovely little thing to add to your base. So we'll do a nice long video about leaf pullings in the next month or two. So check back for that. And then be sure to comment below. Let me know how yours are doing. If you have questions, if there's other videos you want, always keep us posted. All right, happy growing.